guys and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer board game review and today's game up on the tabletop endless winter by fantasia the game plays two to five players takes about an hour to an hour and a half to play and is for ages 10 and up and in the game endless winter you are playing as a paleo american from 10,000 bc you'll start your tribe off as a hunter gatherer tribe and slowly build your civilization over eras where you will have megalithic structures you'll be hunting and gathering building huts and creating unique and interesting types of tools and machinery and as you go along your objective is to do a slight deck builder as well as do a little bit of area control where you'll be placing down your huts and moving across the continent as well as of course gathering new people and performing different actions certain actions are going to be more beneficial for yourself if you take them first and then otherwise it will slowly degrade depending on when you're going to be placing and whether you're placing a tribesman or your main tribe chieftain the game plays over a course of time and when the game ends you're going to score up all of your points that are going to associated on the board in your deck and what you've placed down and whoever has the most points is the winner pretty simple in nature but there is a lot of complexity and the game has a lot of options let's go take you down below i'll show you what's in the game how a play and then we'll come up and discuss the review so here we have the game endless winter paleo americans and it's set up currently for two players every single player is going to get a player board as well as these two blue cubes on zero for food and for tools they're also going to get a starting set of cards a nine of them to be exact as well as you're going to give everybody a random starting card here or a player reference card this is going to show you what additional starting items you'll get in the game which we'll talk about in a second here go ahead and place all of your little campsites from the five all the way across place your chief and your two tribes people in this area over here then you're going to have these huts here where you're going to place on all three areas as well as megaliths you'll stack them up with the gray ones here at the front and then all the rest of them stacked in two all the way across the board here then go ahead and gain your starting bonuses and for this specific card it's going to give you one meat it's going to give you one of these hammers here it's going to let you move across this board here twice and you can choose in what order you can do two on one one on each or two on the other and so in this case i'll just go ahead and move this one up one and this one up one as well and also i can go ahead and bury a card from my deck if i want i'm gonna go ahead and bury this card when you bury cards place them right over here after that, then you've basically got, you're basically going to just take cards equal to what they say over here. So in this case, I'm going to take one of these tribes cards. There's five total tribes cards in the game. Go ahead and make sure they're all the same and stack them on top of the location where they're supposed to go, which is indicated in the middle right hand side. Put this card into your deck and then make sure you go ahead and shuffle your deck. Then also take care of the animals that they say to get. So in this case here, I'm going to grab one of these guys, look through the deck here and take one out and place it in this area here. And remember, never turn it to the side unless you're using it. So it's going to start off just like that. After that, make sure everybody else does the same thing. Flip the card over and now you have a turn reference card, which you can use for the rest of the game. The rest of the setup is pretty easy. Basically, depending on the number of players, you're going to make a setup of a board here. It's going to make, basically be a circle with the camp in the middle, and it'll tell you specifically what, car, what, what tiles are going to go there. You're also going to make sure that your chief card is next to your board, as well as this setup here. This is your megalith board, in which you're going to be placing these guys down here. And these are the starting positions for that board. And when you place certain things on this board, you're going to be gaining a benefit. And the benefits are all listed here, whether it be to draw a card, whether it be to get an animal, whether it be gain meat, or whether it be to move up on these tracks here. Based on the number of players is how many animals that you put out through this deck. Make sure it's shuffled, of course, and draw out the number of players equal to animals. And in this case, it's two for a two-player game. Also, you're going to have these culture cards. Now, there's two different decks for culture cards. The first deck is going to be the tier one deck, and it'll show you in the middle right hand side, number one. Shuffle the deck and, of course, deal out eight cards here right underneath these four tribes cards. And take this separator card, which separates the culture one from culture two tier decks. And, of course, as you can see, you've got the culture two tier decks here. Make sure this is shuffled and then place this right on top. This will move after the the first round in which case you're going to basically be having round one and round two with the tier one cards and round three and round four with the tier two cards 
This is the main board of the game, which provides four different actions that you can take. It'll also provide these little stone tablets, which are going to be victory conditions that you can acquire throughout the game, which will give you points at the end of the game. This is the turn order track. Go ahead and set uh, the first player up here and the second player here, and you can decide how you'd like to do that. Place everybody's scoring markers here at the zero. And of course, the scoring tracker will go all the way around the board to 100. And when you get 100 points, you can take this and put this on your board to symbolize you've gotten over 100 points. And place these extra strength tokens to the side, somewhere near the culture cards, because you'll be using them on there. That's pretty much the entire setup for the game. So after everybody has their player boards and all of their setup, as well as all the board is set up, then you can begin. And the game is actually fairly simple. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to play, you're going to draw five cards from the deck, just like a normal deck builder. You shuffle up your deck of nine or ten cards, you'll deal out five cards to yourself, and then you can play up to two culture cards. These are the culture cards, most of them will give you some benefit, whether it be two of these tools and one meat, which you'll keep track of on the board here. Or maybe it'll say to spend a meat to bury a card and gain a tool. All of these do different things. And like I said, on your turn, you can play zero, one, or two of them. Then take one of your three figures and place it somewhere on this main board here. You can place it on any of these four spaces and they all do different things. And we'll go ahead and just talk about them all real quick. This one over here first is going to let you go down this track here. And there's three things that you can do in each of these areas. This one over here is going to let you gain tribes cards, and you can gain as many as you want, but never the same one more than once, and you can spend strength. And the cards in your deck, we'll just go ahead and grab five of them here. You'll be spending your culture cards, like I said, you can go ahead and discard those, and then you're going to gain these. And these are all strength value. This is your currency in the game, and you're going to be using these over a period of three turns, so make sure you use them as best as you can. And you'll spend them up above your player area. Now, of course, this is kind of blocked but this is where you're going to be placing your cards, and this is where you're going to be using to spend. Uh, you'll also be using meat as this uh, ability to spend as well, so every time you spend a meat, that's also going to generate you a currency, as well as, of course, if you need to, tools. So in this case, two of these is going to grant you a card, and you can do this multiple times. You move down this track here, spending a tool, letting you bury cards from your hand, discard pile, or in play, and then you'll go down here. Now, if you are the first player on this track to place your guy, you'll take the bonus action, which is right here in the circle, and you'll place it right there, in which it indicates that you can move up on either of these two tracks here and, and spend, uh, or basically and put a card into the discard, into your buried pile. But if somebody is already there and you wanted to place your guy on this track, you would be able to do this action, this action, and then you'd simply place your guy there. And the same is said for every single track. So in this track here, it's going to let you spend three to get culture cards. You'll move down here. This will let you purchase these guys, which are end of game scoring bonuses, and you'll place them on your board here. And when you do that, you'll gain a certain benefit and it will tell you, and they get more expensive as you buy more of them. And then you can get a bonus of being able to draw a card and a tool. This one over here is going to let you start placing these villages out, which is good because you're going to gain points for having villages on certain areas on the game board as well as when you have three villages that are next to each other in a triangle formation, you can turn these guys in to one of these. So basically the first thing you can do is place a village, then you can move a village adjacent to an adjacent space, and then after that you can move down to this track over here and spend three food to turn these three guys into one of these huts. And when you do that, you'll be placing these back onto the board where they go in their position and taking this out and placing this in the middle area. And this is basically going to buy for control in this area because generally this area, each of your little little tents here are gonna be worth one. And this here is gonna be worth two in each of the locations that it's adjacent to. The final thing on this track for a bonus is to place down one of these tents as well as move it. Then the final action you can do is you can go on your hunt, your big game hunting. You will first start off here, moving down one, spending one in order to place out a card onto the board, or you can spend two to take one of these and place it into your little big game hunting area. These cards are basically set collection cards that are gonna give you benefits throughout the game. And as you collect more and more of them, they will give you benefits, as well as you can use them for meat. Speaking of meat, we'll move down to the next action here. If you want, you can turn one card sideways in this, in this specific area here to grant you meat. And in this one here, if you turn it sideways, you'll gain five meat. But remember, your board is limited based on the amount of tents that are out. So having tents out is a good idea before gaining meat. Otherwise, you can potentially lose the meat you could gain. And the final thing here is you can draw one of these cards from the top of the deck and put it into your pool here. 
So, like I said, all you're going to do is play two culture cards, choose one of these tracks and place your guy on and go all the way through it. And then the next player will do the same. And they'll go back and forth doing this three times. And then on the third time, you're going to finish up the round and you're going to go ahead and do an eclipse phase. Now, there's one specific action I didn't talk about. We'll talk about it now. If you want, you can place one of your guys here, which will generate currency for the eclipse phase. And it's going to basically allow you to uh, do unique things during this phase here. You can also place cards down here and it'll let you draw cards too when you place your characters here. And so during the Eclipse phase, the first thing you're going to do is check the turn order track. And whoever has the most value in this area is going to go up on the starting of this track here. And you'll get the bonus for the specific space. And it'll also let you go first in the next round. Then you'll also check your player board. And if you have any empty space on your board that has a little Eclipse icon next to it, you're going to gain certain things like drawing a card or gaining the... Um, getting this guy here, the uh, tool here. And there's also potentially cards that you can play here that will also give you additional bonuses if placed in your Eclipse area. Like for instance, if this is in your Eclipse area here, you can place down a tent and gain two food. Everybody will do that, as well as then you're going to check the terrain tiles. And in this case here, this guy is on these three areas and he controls these areas because he has more tents and or villages or huts than anybody else. So he'd gain two food and he'd gain a tool. After everybody does the Eclipse, then you're just simply going to go back into the game. You'll refresh everything. And after you refresh once, you go ahead and take this, place it over here, and then you'll start using these cards here, the Tier 2 Culture cards, which is going to basically make for better results, better things that you can get throughout your deck. You're going to draw five cards. The player who starts is going to go, and you're going to continue the game up until the final phase. This is the turn marker, so you'll go from one, do the eclipse, to two, two, go ahead and uh, do the eclipse, and then change the culture out, three, so on and so forth, finish the eclipse on the f after the fourth round, and then tally the points, and whoever has the most points is the winner. There's a ton of different ways to score points in the game. One of them, of course, is to gather these tribe cards that are gonna give you points, and these will happen at end of game if they have a black circle with a number in the middle, whereas if they have a white circle or a gray circle with a number, you're going to gain those points instantly on the board. You'll gain points for every card in your deck, discard pile, etc, etc. And you're also going to gain points for animals. These animals will give you points based on the number of sets you have collected throughout the game. And you're going to get points for having this board over here. You'll get points based on how far you are along these tracks here and how many meat and how many tools you have. And you'll gain points for having megaliths, these things on the board. You'll be placing these guys down and you can be, you'll be stacking them up throughout the game and you'll gain points that way as well as of course benefits for placing on this board here and after that everybody will tally up all the points they've acquired and whoever has gotten the farthest along on this wonderful little track here will be the winner of the game endless winter okay let's come up and talk about it so there you go endless winter i pretty much described everything i just didn't really talk about the culture cards and the tribe cards as to what they do and how they work but for the most part you'll be playing them over a course of three turns per each basic round and then you'll be utilizing those cards as currency to progress your civilization and so will everybody else of course playing in certain areas is going to generate a unique action or beneficial action for you as long as no one else was there and i also didn't talk about the fact that you get chieftains and what they do most of the time chieftains will associate with one of the four different actions in the game and give you a benefit whether it be an additional currency or not as well as you can use them in the eclipse area action of the board as well and basically it's going to allow you to decide when and how you want to place things. And placement is very, very important in this game. There's not a whole lot of choice as far as what actions you take, but each of the different action pools will grant you a ton of different options that you can go down and kind of manipulate either the area control portion of the game, the deck building portion of the game, or the collection aspect where you're going big game hunting. There's a lot in this game. It seems like a whole lot of like, it seems like it's like a crazy big game, but in reality, the game's actually really well structured and easy to understand once you get through the first phase of the game you're going to easily understand what the objective is in the game what you're trying to go for and create your strategy 
based on how you played previously. Now, do you want to start just building culture and expanding your area? Do you want to focus on big game hunting and going out and slaying as many animals as you can to keep them basically sets in, in sets and trying to collect all the sets you possibly can? Some animals are wild and some are not, and that can benefit you as how you choose to place them. Do you want to make it more about deck building and getting as many culture cards that provide you as many points as possible? Or do you want to do a little bit of everything? Really, the choice is yours. The comp components and quality of the game are excellent. This thing looks like it's going to be spectacular. It's got a couple minis as far as the chieftains go. It's got the nice little meeples for the tribesmen. All of the boards have these like etched in areas as well as putting it together is a lot of fun. You can just see this whole thing come to life and it's availability to change is nice as well. You never play the same game twice, even with the area control portion, as well as going and actually changing around the megalith board as well. You can actually have different combinations there as well. And of course, the fact that there's not, it's not just one thing that you can do. Deck building provides such a unique twist to the game, even though you're not pulling through cards from your deck and creating an engine. It's more of you're trying to choose the best cards for your deck based on the strategy they want to accomplish, as well as maybe you want to kind of put those together with dealing with the specific area control aspect of the game. Or do you want to do with gaining more food and being able to gain more strength, which you can then use to fight the animals a whole lot. You've also got the artwork in the game. It's beautiful, excellent artwork. This game feels like you're out in the barren tundra dealing with all these Paleolithic animals and coming across other tribes people. You're not necessarily going up against your opponents in this game, but you are attempting to get the spaces you want first, because if you do, you can get those bonus abilities, which are so nice. And if you start trailing behind, it's going to cost you. So sometimes you might not want to use the ability or the action that you originally previously planned on using because somebody else got there and you needed that specific bonus. So you're gonna go for a different bonus and try and twist up your strategy. So your strategy changes as you play the game, which is, I guess, a positive or a negative, depending on how you look at things. For me, it made me have to always rethink my strategy and choose a new, new route in order to get to the same location, which was a lot of fun. That and of course the culture cards, being able to suss out which ones I want to use. Do I want to go for mainly points or can I use one that's going to give me currency to go throughout the game? Do I want to worry about the megaliths and placing them down, how I place them to gain the benefits? Or do I want to stack them? Because when you stack those megaliths at the end of the game, you'll score more points. The more you have on the board and the higher they go can give you a multiplier that's very nice as well. But if you don't utilize it, you're not going to score a lot. As well as, of course, the main aspect of the area control in the game, trying to place your tents out on all the spaces that are going to grant you those bonuses for each era. That's super useful. And if you can do that early in the game, it's going to provide you a deep and rich benefit. And players are going to notice that and start coming at you to make sure that either A, you share it with them, or B, they just simply take it from you. Overall, this game is a whole lot of fun. This is definitely a medium to heavier style game. I'd say probably medium medium heavy yeah somewhere right in the middle there and for most of you guys that are more party gamers or somebody who's not like as interested in a more sophisticated complex strategy game like this one's probably not going to be for you it's also a little bit longer there is a lot of setup to the game and you have to rem you know, remember all the setup and whatnot but for me it wasn't it wasn't that big of a deal. After I got it down once, I now know how to do it constantly because everything is so well laid out. The graphic design is very easy to determine where and what goes in where, what areas and how you do all the placement. I have a lot of fun with Endless Winter. I think for the most part, if you see this game and you like what you're seeing, what you're hearing, you're going to dig this game. Definitely check it out by Fantasia Endless Winter or Paleo, Paleo Americans. I had a lot of fun with this one and everyone I was playing with had a ton of fun as well. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, and hit that bell notification button. It'll let you see more videos of ours just like this one. You can decide if you want to pick these games up on Kickstarter as well as retail games as well. And of course, don't forget to check out our Kelly's Corner videos. We have giveaways on our website associated with her. And speaking of our website, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, all kinds of stuff. We have two writer, two or three writers now going and just putting a bunch of content in there for you guys to watch. And we have reviews that tie in with a lot of our video reviews. So somebody else will write the review on our website and then I'll have the video and you can kind of suss out which one you think is going to be more appropriate for you, the reader or watcher. And of course, check out our live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games like this just like this one every Wednesday. I think you'll have a great time. Join us. We give away games on there. And we also do stuff on Discord. Play Among Us with us. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I look forward to 
building a crazy winter society with you next time.